Hey gang, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to the Stud Pack Dream House Build. In the previous video, you saw us finally start framing after all the challenges we had with this awesome foundation. We got three walls up on Saturday and our goal today is to finish the first floor framing. It is so awesome to drive by and finally see these beautiful walls standing up and even to be in Jordan's house having lunch, look out the windows and see some framing of our new garage. Today's goal is to finish the front wall. It's gonna have a massive 18 foot beam. It has to span this opening plus support the second floor. Can't wait to get that guy up. Then we're gonna have a two by four partition wall here and that's gonna house the stairs going right upstairs to the new dream apartment for Jordan. So let's come on down here to our pressure treated two by six sill plate and discuss how we're gonna lay out all the framing to support that massive 18 foot long beam that's spanning the garage door and supporting the second floor plus the roof. What the heck, that's a brand new blade. It's not cutting worth a dang. Oh my gosh, look what I did. I have, I have never done that before. I put it on backwards. Monday morning madness, and I guess I was so excited about framing, I didn't even pay attention. Yeah, this is my house, And of course man. it's on YouTube, yeah, right? Yeah, right here. Take a sip of that and uh, get it together. Uh, what is this? It's good, trust me. All right, guys, we got our pressure treated two by six sill plate and our two by six top plate laid out end to end. Now come on over here at this joint between the bottom plates or the sill plate. Obviously this is not gonna stay, but what we're gonna do, we're gonna put this block on there and make it one so things don't move during our layout. We kind of fought it on that one because we didn't use that block, but once the wall is stood up, we'll cut this off just like all the others have a nice clean entrance. So what is the rough opening for an 18 foot wide garage door? Well. It's 18 feet from the jack stud on this side to the jack stud on the other side. As you can see, I've already got a couple of pencil marks right here, but here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna set this back that way another half an inch because remember in the previous video, we talked about the fact that we're gonna take our zip sheathing that has an integrated water resistant barrier on the front and we're gonna wrap it around this corner because this jack stud doesn't have any defenses. Sure, you got your sill plate that's treated, but now you've got your jack and what typically happens? They use a piece of two by or something else to trim it out in with a big bead of caulk there that fails. This gets all wet in a driving rain or it soaks it up from right here. And now this guy rots. See it all the time, not only on garage doors, but exterior doors as well. And staying on a bulletproofing note, of course, we're gonna put Lexel all under here so water doesn't get under the end and we may even put Lexel here before we put our sheathing on to make a barrier between the framing and the inside of our sheathing. Because we're doing all this work, water can't get in here between the concrete and the sill because yeah. it's full of Lexel, right? I like that. But now it can come up between here and I think that's gonna really help our blower door test. Yeah, it's a garage. We're gonna do a blower door test upstairs for sure and on the main house. So I think it's a detail worth exploring to make sure we get it right. All right, guys, let's start laying out the framing to hold up that massive beam. We're gonna start right here with a stud pack. If you don't know, that's where our name comes from. The very first project we ever did on our channel, we had a pack of studs supporting a beam Jordan loved the name and the rest is history. So this line right here represents the edge of our sheathing. Imagine this pencil, it's the thickness of the sheathing. That's our edge. This line represents the edge of our first stud. 18 feet over from this edge is the other side of that sheathing. So if that line is the edge of our first stud or the first jack, let's pull out the tape. We're gonna go an inch and a half. There's one jack, another inch and a half, our second jack, and another inch and a half for our third jack. Is three too many? Probably, the plans didn't tell us. Remember, we have one jack on this little door, two jacks on the beam on the back, and we felt like it was better just to put three here because of this big old beam supporting the, the uh, garage door, the garage door opening, and the second floor. I actually called the architect, he said two is actually enough, but he liked three and so do we, and we have the lumber, so we're gonna put three jacks. Now we're gonna lay out our kings. There's one king, and again, we're gonna go double up on our kings and go two kings. So it's a jack, a jack, a jack, a king, and a king. Full house. That's right, let me get the uh, big square, and I'm gonna mark our two kings. And I'm just gonna put a K on there, just so you know what we're talking about. But it's, it's awesome when you're framing, and it's a, always a reminder that that's your king. Now your jacks don't go all the way up, so I'm just gonna write them on the sill plate. There we go. Can you see that? Yep. Our, our three jacks supporting the beam. The beam will go all the way to here and then two kings on the end. Let's go do the other end and then we'll lay out all the studs in between and then we're ready to start building this wall.
it. What? Remember I said earlier, I'm only gonna put one king on so I can nail through this king into the end of my beam? Yeah. Because now if I have two kings, I can't reach. Yeah, you got too excited, didn't you? I did, just yeah. like with the uh, backwards blade on the saw. Yeah. All right, let's pull this guy off. Won't take but a minute. And I can't believe I did that. And this is not gonna be easy. But look, you know what? Check it out. One, two, three. What if we just cut that right there? And that's our three jacks. Get two more kings off the pile. What do you think? I like that. Pull 12 nails or one cut with the saw. All right, we pulled our two kings aside, got them out of the way so I don't accidentally attach them to my beam support. And the other thing I'm looking at right now, trying to think ahead, because I haven't been doing a good job this morning yet, I need room to get my nail gun in here to attach this king to that one. This stud is a little close. We could just attach it at the bottom and tip it out, but I'd just rather uh, put it in. And I got enough room in here to come in at an angle, just like that, to attach this king to that one. And on the other side, plenty of room. So uh, let's build a wall, man. You ready? Let's do it. Woo! wall is all assembled and now it is beam time. How do we measure for that beam? We could come up here and measure, but what if that has a little, no. Oh, but what if this has a little bow in it? We know it's straight, but it's always more accurate to measure at your sill plate or your base plate. So I'm gonna have Rad hold the tape right there against the king. I'm gonna pull a number to the other king and that's the length of our beam. All right, 226, let's go cut it. <laughs> Just judging on how hard it was to flip that, how hard is it going to be to stand that wall up? I'm not, I'm not trying to think about it. It's heavy, dude. Man, that thing was a bear to flip. Good thing I'm cutting a couple feet off of it. That'll make it like 20 pounds lighter. I better get the planer. Got a little bit of a lift there. All right, guys, time to move this beam. And right now, it's just pure muscle. Well, it's actually sliding pretty good. You there yet? Let me pull. All right, here's the game plan. We got our shoulder dolly set up on Rad and Jordan. And I want you guys to give me a little lift to show how we're going to lift that beam. All right, one, two, three. Just like that. And we're just a little past halfway. And I'm going to take the rest of the load on this end and kind of steer as they walk to our location over by the wall. All right, guys, the beam's in place. Really wasn't that bad. Worked smart with the shoulder dolly. Now it's just a matter of nailing it in place. All right, gang, we got a lot of nails in this beam right here, but we'd feel better if we just put some big old screws in it. So that's what we're gonna do. Ready? Yep. 
Yep. Yep. Hold on. Back you up. Yeah. I love that hit. Yep. Good. Yep. All right, guys. Beam is in. Cripples are in. We put in our last king stud. I'm going to nail it off. Then we're ready to lift this wall. Woo! All right, we could not. How, how much do y'all think we lifted that off the ground? Not even, Three right? Inches. Yeah. Dude. yeah, not even. After that wall that we struggled with and bent the bolts, I didn't want to go through that again. So you this, believe in me? You trust me? I do. It's good. This has got to be 500 pounds. It's got to be. So uh, I got something in the truck that's going to make our day a lot well, a lot easier. What, a V8? <laughs> Let me back the truck up and we'll see what I got. All right, guys, here we go. What is this? this I, you know, I don't even want to know what this is. How much money did you spend on this? $70. Really? Yeah. We got to have it back by tomorrow morning. Oh, you rented it? Yes, sir. Oh, man. Well, we got to find out how much it is to buy one of these things because we're probably going to need it multiple times. But well, anyway, what'd that, you get? That's kind of why I wanted to try it today. Okay. If it works well, we'll lift it. We'll use it for the what steel beam. It? So it has a lot of different names depending on where you live in the country. I call it a genie lift because it's made by the genie manufacturing company. The guy at the rental yard had no idea what I was talking about. He calls it a material lift. And when I was in the mechanical trades, we called it a duct hoist. Well, I like Genie Lift because that's the company, but also it's going to grant us our wish, right? It is. I wish to see that garage wall up <laughs> right now. Let's get it unloaded. All right. And it's really easy to unload. Check it out. It's got these bars. It's going to slide down. Got some landing gear. Boom. There you go. All right, guys, we've got our Genie Lift under our beam, under our wall. And we just use leverage to get this thing up, put some blocks under it, just enough to get the forks under the machine. Now these come in different heights. In other words, this mass goes up as the load goes up. This is a 12 footer and this one's rated at 425 pounds. And that's about the weight of a little upright piano. So I know that we're well within the capacity of the machine. The other cool thing about it is there's no like mechanical brake on this. When you crank up and let go, it holds the load. Hey, raise another quarter inch. Just like that. Lower it half an inch. Just like that. Super easy, well designed well worth 70 bucks to save our backs. Now let's talk game plan. We're not doing our sill sealer or our Lexel just yet. What we wanna do is tip the wall up, set it down about right here against our chalk line. We're gonna actually set it down on the ground. Then we're gonna put our sill sealer and our Lexel here. Then we're gonna lift the wall up, roll forward, and drop it right on top of our bolts. You guys ready? I'm ready. Woo, let's do it. All right, here we go, guys. Now, I'm not in the middle of the beam because we got this wall is a little heavier on that side, so I'm just a little bit past halfway. Here we go. Oh, of course the compressor comes on. <laughs> I'm going to turn it off because I want to hear what's going on. Okay. All right, as we're lifting the machine, the lift is not tracking with it that way, not yet. It will, and we're getting near the ends of the forks here. So we're gonna use our boards, and we're gonna pull it back as much as we can right here, so we have as much purchase under the beam as possible. You ready, Red? Yep. Two, three, nice. High five, woo. All right, we'll keep lifting, but that's what we need to watch right there, so that thing doesn't come off of there. All right, guys, this is going off without a hitch, but we would feel a lot better if this were chained to the fork so that it couldn't, couldn't slip off. So that's what we're gonna do.
All right, this hoist is working awesome. The chain, awesome idea also, keeping that from slipping off the forks. But we're about to run into a massive problem with this 500 pound beam looming right over our heads. What's the problem we're facing? Well, as we've been lifting, we've been moving the forks this way and the bottom of the wall has been sliding against the base of the machine. But it's gonna get caught right here and when we try to lift it, it's definitely gonna get caught right there. So it's a good thing this is a garage door and that this piece of wood is just temporary. Since it's temporary, let's cut it out of our way so we can finish lifting this wall. Okay guys, a little mid-play audible. We gotta be able to roll this with the load on it because we wanna roll forward and drop it on the bolts. So we had this piece of plywood, we put it down. So I'm gonna crank it up and we're all gonna three get on this thing and see if we can move it forward that direction. Roll forward. I'm ready. Good. I'm perfectly on. Perfect. Wow. Woo, nice job, man. Woo, good All job. Right. We cut that one, I'll, I'll sink down this one, you can start the next. Yeah. Better than opening an A2. I got you. We will save one. I got you. Yeah, yeah, go for it. You'll see it. Lexo squeeze, here we go. Oh yeah, that's what we want right there. And we are done. How awesome was that, gang? A $70 rental to save our backs and lift this massive beam up here safely, slowly, and now it's super secure. And check it out, bud. You got an 18-foot wide garage opening. You think you can get your Stang in here? For sure. And uh, you think you'll let me put my Ford next to your Ford? If you wash it. If I wash it? All right, deal. But check this out. We have one pick of lumber almost gone. Just about five two by sixes left. Got a few up there. That's awesome to see that amount of lumber gone already. And check this out. Look at our scrap pile down here. Huge shout out to BFS. The guys at Builders First Source killed it. Super appreciate it. So we're going to lower the lift, put it back on the truck so we can return it bright and early tomorrow morning. And the last thing we're going to do today, super, super important. Check this out. I can grab the corner of this building. It doesn't matter how heavy it is, but look. See how it's moving? So we're going to double brace every corner. We're going to use some screws so we can take them off easy later. Uh, so I say we get this loaded up, put the braces on, maybe take a water break, get out of here. All right, gang, it is the next day. We got our walls braced. They're really strong now. Now, the goal today is simply to build our last interior wall, or really the only interior wall for the garage space. And it's exactly like this one, except for two key differences. This one's two by six. The interior wall right here is two by four. And we don't need this massive header because this is just a partition wall not a load bearing wall for anything up above. So as you can see, we already got two chalk lines down here. The plans call for four foot two from the outside of our exterior wall, which gives us an interior dimension of about three foot eight and a half. Really generous for a set of stairs right here. I really like it because we're gonna be hauling a lot of stuff upstairs. I like the extra width. So it's the exact same process as all these other walls. We're gonna throw you into a time lapse, frame this two by four wall, stand it up. All right, gang, our first and only interior wall in the garage is up, super easy, two by fours. And as you can see, we put sill sealer under it as well. They make it for two by four walls. We just didn't have any. We had two by six sill sealer. So we're gonna trim that off with a knife, no problem at all. And the interior wall is finally giving us some depth to this garage. In other words, we can finally see what's gonna happen. Jordan's gonna pull up here in his car, get his groceries, open this door, walk across through here. This will be an exterior door. You're gonna cross over into the main house under the bridge that connects the second stories, right? And over here, he'll probably have like a big, huge picture of me right there. So you're always reminded of who helped him build the house. And then for a couple of years, he's gonna walk up these stairs into his apartment above the garage while we build the main house. But I say for right now, 
we cut this sill sealer right here. How many times have I said sill sealer in this segment? So we can see our chalk lines and we're gonna bolt this wall to the ground. Let's get our knives and while you guys cut that, I'm gonna get my Bosch Bulldog rotary hammer and uh, let's put in some anchor bolts. Is that shining right there? Is that you? Uh, yeah, I, I think that was me actually. Get it together, dude. All right, gang, all our bolts are in really easy, but there are a lot of details that go into something like that. Number one, you saw us blow out all the dust. I've got an inline blow gun on my air hose. Love that. Oh, can't believe the compressor always comes on. Love that, it just lives there. So always have one. We'll put a link in the description so you can pick up one for your setup. Number two, this is how the anchor bolts came from the hardware store. Here's the bolt we used, half by four and a quarter inch long wedge anchor. It came with this blue zinc coating washer and nut. Not sure what it is, but I know it's probably not rated for being in contact with our pressure treated plates. So I got these hot dip galvanized washers. We're simply gonna swap out the washer for one of those. Use the same coated nut and we're good to go. Now, where do we put them? There are notes on our plans about bolt location, always within 12 inches of the end of the board. So obviously here, we're gonna cut this one, that's our doorway, so there, but not only at the ends of boards and at doorways, but also at the splices of the boards. So there's a splice here, so we've got one on each side of that splice. And that about wraps it up for the first floor framing. But before we go, we're gonna need your help with something. Over here, we got the stairway, right? The stairs start over there and they come up. There's a landing on the second floor and a doorway into the space above Jordan. So I am standing under the stairs. The plans show this wall, but they don't show a door in this wall to access under the stairs. I want to put a doorway here and have this like a secret closet for Jordan, but he doesn't want the wall at all. He wants to cut it off somewhere over here pass the support for our I-beam and just have this open to the garage. So let us know below in the comments what you would do with this space. Put a door, no door, or maybe you have an idea we haven't thought of. And with that guys, the first floor framing is pretty much complete. We used that genie lift and hoisted this massive timber over the garage door, got that wall raised, got this wall up, and we super appreciate all the support on the last framing video, 11,000 likes. Let's see if we can get this video to 13,000. That would be totally awesome. Thanks again for all the support. Get a genie lift. Lift up your like button so you can access it. Smash it for us. Please subscribe. Drop a comment. Ask a question as always. And we'll see you on the next Sled Pack video where we're installing a massive 800-pound I-beam.